So some of you may have uploaded videos to YouTube before, um, but I'm guessing that not all of you have. So if you have, you know this, but if you haven't, you may not know that every time you upload a video to YouTube, you can't actually make it public without answering at least one very important question. It asks you this question, you, it's required, you must answer it, yes or no, in order to post your video. And that question is, is this video made for children? And uh, I think we've got 50 videos up now and I had to pause every time I, I look at that question. And I, and, I, and I always feel bad, I always say no, it's not made for children. Um, and I understand that there are legal reasons why they ask this question, um, but I always think like maybe I should figure out how to make these videos somehow more accessible. And uh, you might also be wishing I would make these videos just a little more accessible because the stuff we're doing is hard. It's hard, it's supposed to be hard. Um, and today is no exception. But the good news is we're gonna take the abstract ideas that we've developed now about the vertex space, the edge space, the cycle space, and the cut space, and we're gonna bring them back and think about what they mean in a context that we have studied quite a bit and one that we can draw pictures of. That is, we're gonna talk about planar graphs. Okay, so today's topic, this video's topic, is about cycles, cuts, and planarity, and the big punchline, or a variation of it, is right here, just laid out. Um, Right here, it's just that the cycle space of a graph is going to be isomorphic to the cut space of its dual. That's, again, for planar graphs, and I guess because we're talking about the dual of a graph, it should be a planar three-connected graph. We're going to see a variation of this as well when the graph is planar but not three-connected, and we can talk about the dual of an embedding of that graph. And this will still hold in that case as well. All right, so this duality, which was a... Um, between the graph and its dual, and also this relationship that we saw between the cycle space and the cut space gets kind of played out in this very direct way when talking about planar graphs. And the reason, which you may have kind of guessed already, is because of the Jordan curve theorem. And if I look at this planar graph, I have also, I guess I could also draw its dual and you will forgive me for not drawing the outer vertex for now. Well, maybe I'll just draw some edges out there. I won't draw. Well, maybe I'll draw them. Maybe we'll go nuts. Okay. So here we go. So this is the dual of this graph. I probably missed something. So, but in black, I had the graph. Then I've drawn the dual graph. And from the Jordan curve theorem, we know that if you take this some simple cycle in here. Okay, let's just draw this one right here. Let's take this cycle right here. So that's a cycle in my graph G. Well, it separates the plane. Like the embedding of that cycle separates the plane into two pieces. There's an inside and an outside. Now the faces of, of my original planar graph, they are going to all be also either all inside or all outside. Now those faces correspond to vertices of the dual. So when I draw a simple cycle, well, I necessarily contain some of my dual vertices and I exclude others. And every edge that goes from one of these vertices inside the cut to one outside is going to be, well, that's going to form a cut uh, where I've cut out these faces from the other faces. And this is the key idea that's going to get us this relationship between cycles and cuts in the dual. All right. And in fact, it will turn out that really this is fundamental really to planar graphs, that you're not gonna have this kind of relationship for graphs that are not planar because um, it really, it's not just that we get it when we have the Jordan curve theorem, it's that we kind of only get it when you have this Jordan curve theorem. All right, so here's our first version of this to, to kind of get into it. Uh, let's let G be a two-connected planar graph. We'll start with two-connected planar graphs because uh, we know that at least in the two-connected planar graphs, every face is a cycle. And so if we take an embedding of that graph in the plane, then we get some cycles which bound faces. And we can show that the, at least 
if we just take the bounded ones, that that forms a basis for the cycle space of the graph. Okay, so after we have an embedding, if you take the edges of any simple cycle, so let's let x be the edges of a simple cycle, then the Jordan curve theorem says that the cycle that x bounds has an inside and an outside. Okay, so this, this distinction inside and outside. And so if you take um, x, you can write it as the sum of these cycles, right, where this is all f, let's say, inside. Now, every edge in the embedding of a planar two-connected graph, as we've seen previously, is in exactly two cycles. That is, it's in exactly two faces, um, not cycles, sorry. So those, those two faces that contain any edge, um, if we add both of them together, that edge will cancel out. And so you can just simply write this, um, th this set of edges in a, any simple cycle as the sum of edges, in this case, inside uh, the cycles of the faces inside that cycle. So maybe I'll just draw a little picture here. So if I was looking at this cycle, it is necessarily the sum of these three smaller cycles. Which means that since every simple cycle then can be written as the sum of these faces, we know that that spans the entire set of cycles. And we can also um, see that actually any, two, any bounded face can't be written as the sum of other cycles because um, as you add them up, you'll always get out to the, at some point you'll get to the boundary, um, and that outer face is, is not included in the basis. All right, so um, also we just know from uh, Euler's formula exactly how many of these faces there are and how many uh, vectors we expect to see in any basis for the cycle space. All right, so that's kind of our, our first step, is to see that, yes, this works. If you have the embedding and you have the cycles, you can use this, this Jordan curve theorem to write larger cycles as sums of faces, if you will. But really, I mean, again, the edges in the cycles that bound the faces. All right, so if we have a three-connected planar graph, then we are going to show that the cycle space of that graph is isomorphic to the cut space of its dual. Now, remember, the only reason we need to include this three connected condition at first is otherwise it wouldn't make sense to talk about its dual. Um, and this is, um, at first, if you try to use the abstract definition of isomorphism for vector spaces, it does, it would seem like we need to find the linear maps. And we can do that. We can actually explicitly write down the relationship between the cycles in the graph and the cuts in the dual. We kind of already hinted at it when we looked at uh, how those cycles and cuts were related with the Jordan curve theorem. But there's actually a really direct way to show two vector spaces are isomorphic is you just have to show they have the same dimension. And since we know what the dimension of these spaces ought to be, we could just check, right? So the dimension of CG, if it's a three connected graph, that means it's connected. So it has uh, M minus however many edges would be in a spanning tree. Remember all the non-spanning tree edges was the first way we found a basis for the cycle space. We looked at the non spanning tree edges, that is we picked a spanning tree, we took out all the, we took all the other edges and we looked at the fundamental cycles of those edges as a basis. So that's going to be how many uh, elements would be in any basis for this cycle space. Now by Euler's formula, we know exactly what this is. If you were to rearrange this, this would be exactly f minus one. Now f is the number of vertices in the dual. And so one minus the number of vertices in a graph, in a connected graph, is the number of, uh, well, it's the, sorry, it's the, it's the dimension of the cut space. 
Okay, so all we did here was just apply Euler's formula to get this equality, and then our known values for the, the dimensions of these two spaces. So any, fi any two finite dimensional vector spaces, if they have the same dimension, then they are isomorphic. Um, but as I mentioned, alternatively, you could try to write out exactly what the correspondence is. And you would do it by looking for a basis. And, and what happens is if, that, if you have a basis for both of these spaces and you could just map between them, that is, you map basis elements to basis elements, uh, that's how you would write the linear transformation. You would extend the rest of the linear map just by looking at what happens to the basis elements. And the key idea is, again, to take a phase cycle, which will form a basis for the cycle space of G, and then consider the dual. Let me try to draw the same cycle over here. You consider the dual cut to that cycle, which is this one. Okay, so the set of edges coming out of that face. And so, in fact, it's quite direct generalization here because you get the, this edge set, which is in the cycle, is, gives you a set of edges, which is the dual of all those edges in uh, the cut. So this is like a one vertex cut. Okay, and this uh, correspondence also gives you the isomorphism. So this is the kind of quick dimension argument that gets you there, but also you could write out the linear map that relates these two vector spaces directly in terms of this duality relationship. All right. So more generally, if G is any planar graph, and uh, now we take an embedding of that planar graph, it's still going to be true that the cycle space is isomorphic to the cut space of the dual. Now this is the dual of the embedding. Okay, So we know that once you have an embedding, you can take the dual of that embedding and that will be a graph. And so we could take the cut space of that graph. Now the idea here again is just to use Euler's formula again. We'll again see now that this is something like m minus n plus the number of components which, if you remember Euler's formula, usually we just throw in a 2, something like n minus m plus f equals 2, but that 2 is really 1 plus the number of components. So this is still equal to f minus 1. And the dual of an embedding is actually always connected. So I'll let you think about why that's the case. But since it's always connected, there's only one component, f minus 1, is going to also be the dimension now of that cut space of the dual of the embedding. All right, so, so this is actually true more generally um, about planar graphs. Now, in the beginning, I, I hinted about this, that this is really the only case where you have these duals. So if you wanted to, you could define an abstract dual of a graph. So we're going to say that H is this abstract dual of G. Now, G doesn't have to be planar. Let's say just at first we say, hey, any graph G, and I, I start with G, and I, I, I will ask, give me an H where the cut space of H is isomorphic to the cycle space of G. Um, we saw in the case of planar graphs, like the planar dual has this property, but you can look for like other duals now. It seems great. It seems like maybe there's a way to talk about duals of graphs that are not necessarily um, planar. And... Uh, Unfortunately, or fortunately, it's kind of a cool fact, but this characterizes planar graphs. In fact, the graph G has an abstract dual if and only if G is planar. So we've seen already that if it's planar, then it has an abstract dual, right? You just take any embedding and you take the dual of the embedding. But it turns out that's the only case. Um, and so uh, what we have here actually is two interesting things. One is it now for us makes sense to talk about a dual graph of, of another a planar graph, right? Which is something we kind of had stayed away from. We said, look, if we have an embedding, we can get the dual of an embedding and it's not like the dual. 
Um, but uh, now, you know, this is this says, okay, planar graphs have the, have an abstract dual. We knew that, but more than that, uh, it only has an abstract dual if it's planar. So this is a really really cool fact. All right, so that wraps it up for this video. This kind of trying to connect cut spaces, cycle spaces, with ideas from planarity and how they, how the Jordan curve theorem really gives us uh, maybe the cleanest connection between cuts and cycles. And in fact, with this last theorem, it gives us the only setting in which you can really relate the cut space of one graph to the cycle space of another. So um, next time we'll dive into how to take some of these uh, linear algebraic ideas about the transformations between vector space, uh, vertex space and edge space and uh, turn them into matrices. So we'll see that soon.